Hello YouTube, it's Warfighter Mto. It's been a while since I've done some videos, been really busy. But my next set of videos I want to do is going to be primarily focused on uh, combat equipment, personal equipment. Uh, it goes by many names in the Army, it's called TA-50. Uh, but basically it's just your tactical nylon. And in this series I'm going to have hopefully short little five seven minute videos going over each of the major manufacturers that are out there pros cons what I don't like um, some of the history and philosophy on some of the stuff that is made and uh, some of the developmental stuff and why stuff is built the way it is and what to look for when you're buying stuff because a lot of new soldiers they come to their units and they you know when I was a brand new soldier I was a little floored by uh, the availability of the gear and I didn't know what was good what wasn't good as far as personally bought stuff and uh, luckily you know in today's military when you're a new soldier you have a lot of friends that have been around the block so to say and they can mentor you and show you and teach you on uh, you know how to set up your kit how to use your equipment what personal stuff to buy so the first one I'm going to go over, first company, is kind of like the, uh, they call it the industry standard in tactical nylon. It's Eagle Industries. Big name, huge government contractor. They provide 90% of SOCOM's tactical nylon, everything from vests, carriers, pouches, um, assault packs, you name it, Eagle Industries provides it. Now, I'm not, now with that being said, they do some things really good, and sometimes they miss the mark. You know, they're, they're pumping out production. You know, in anything that is highly produced, there are going to be lemons and there are going to be things that are missed uh, in the production of those materials. And I just want to go over, uh, first of all, what I have in front of you is a old SOCOM issued Mars Cirrus. Okay? Cirrus stands for Combat Integrated Released Assault System or something like that around that line. It was a play on old Greek... Uh, what the old Greeks called their armor, their cirruses, if you look it up, a Greek cirrus was just the name of their um, upper torso body armor. So they, they, you know, Eagle Industries did a little play on this. But this vest is kind of one of the most earliest armor carriers that our uh, special operations forces used. Uh, just a quick history behind it. This is a bulks cut carrier. And when you say bulks cut, that's referring to the cut of the soft armor. Now, the soft armor is a panel, both back and front, and they're cut similarly. But it's in the shape of this front area. Okay, it has side protection, it has front protection. The rear plate, or the rear ones, cut very similarly. Uh, this was the requirement put by SOCOM in the late 1990s for a body armor system. And it was first implemented with the spear bulks vest. Okay, there's a lot of shortcomings with that vest, but it was pretty much the first modern body armor system that our military decided it was going to use, special operations at least. So this vest was the next iteration of the Bulk's vest. Okay, and it was called a Mart. It's called a Cirrus. There was a land version and a marine version. And this is the marine version, and pretty much all that refers to is the way that it opens. The land cirrus has a traditional flap with a two-sided cummerbund, and it comes through and it just you put your flap over your Velcro elastic sides of the vel or the uh, cummerbund. This one, each side has a, a Velcro part of the cummerbund that uh, encloses it. Uh, this one is probably a little bit more popular because it gives you a little bit more real estate and it's easier to don and doff. But other than that, they're pretty much identical. Uh, the big, a big improvement over the old Spear Balks vest that was issued to SOCOM prior to the SOCOM and use sock buying this was that it was not releasable. This one is fully releasable. And it has a pull tab, and if I yank this right now, I could just tear the vest, the vest should theoretically come apart. It's, I don't know, God, this vest is probably older than dog shit, and, you know, it's probably 
like sweat rusted together so who knows if it would come apart actually or not plus I don't have any plates in here it just has soft armor but so Eagle Industries was very early on the scene they've been making tactical nylon since like the early 1990s they're one of the oldest names in the industries and uh, you know they did a lot of innovation this was like really innovative for its time this was high technology 2003 so Eagle Industries I like them uh, I like to compare them as the gold standard, you know, the Ford and Chevy of the tactical nylon world, uh, maybe even a little bit higher. But uh, I'm going to go through over why I like in Eagle Industries and why I don't. As far as durability, I give them a C or a B. They're not the most durable, but they don't fall apart under any sort of use either. And whenever you're looking at tactical nylon, you need to, you need to, especially if you haven't actually been out and able to test different manufacturers gear and you actually know from first-hand experience what works or you know if you're a new guy then obviously your leadership and your friends they'll be able to tell you what works and doesn't work but when you look in tactical nylon you need to look at its construction and that's knowing the materials of the vest you know this vest is a 500 near nylon vest and all this everything's lock stitched and double stitched uh, you, you need to look at that because your cheaper vests out there, they're not going to be built to that same quality. And I assure you, in the personal equipment world, construction of material and quality is, is key. And if, it, if it's not built and manufactured to spec, then you probably don't want it. So, and the Army doesn't always buy the best stuff. Uh, you know, personal TA-50 and the big Army isn't all that great. I mean, it's better than what it was 15, 20 years ago. I mean, it's leap and bounds ahead. But it, as far as construction, it could be a lot better, you know, you know, lowest bidder, you know, that's how the Army works. So, fortunately, SOCOM doesn't do the lowest bidder. They went with the Eagle Industries for most of their stuff. So, uh, this vest, very good uh, construction. You can see this one has some, some pretty good use. But overall, you know, this vest is probably over 10 years old, you know, 9, 8, eight 9, 10 years old. And it is fully functional. This has been to Iraq. This has been worn out on missions. Um, the stitching, the webbing of the stitching is tight. The stitching that holds the molly to the vest is still very tight. It's still very flexible. Nothing is frayed. None of the stitching, it should be noted, is frayed. Okay? Now, when we get up to the shoulder pads, some of the Velcro, the female portion of the Velcro, is starting to fray. But that's completely normal. And that does not function the or that does not disrupt the function of this vest so eagle industries i give them a c or b in my book um, i'm pretty tough on my grading scale when it comes to personal equipment but i would have uh, no problem wearing eagle industries now i have seen eagle industry stuff fail i've seen uh, pouches fail and i will get a pouch This is an old Eagle Industries uh, pouch right here. I think it's a signals pouch. But where I commonly see the Eagle Industry pouches fail is right here. Right here at the stitching on where it how it attaches uh, to the molly. That's where I typically see them to fail. If you have like a lot of weight resting on that or it gets caught on something, it can rip and uh, you know become you know, not effective because now it's not partially attached to your vest or your chest rig or whatever you have it attached to. But other than that, it's very durable. And the older, in my opinion, the older Eagle Industry stuff was made a lot better. You know, this pouch right here, you know, is built like a shit brick house. It has heavy elastic with good double Loctite stitching. Um, when you look inside the pouches, they don't leave the ends unstitched and frayed. Everything's sewn up. And this is all stuff you want to be looking for because if you, you know, if, if a manufacturer is cutting costs by not sewing the ends up properly of this equipment, it's, just, it's not going to last. It's just going to break on you. And, you know, would you rather spend an extra $10 buying something that will last you your whole life or save that $10 and have to buy something two or three times? You know, it just it comes, it comes down to cost effective and what you want to trust your life with. So... For me, it's, you know, trust of dependability. I trust the brands I buy, you know, because I, I have experience with them and I trust them because they've been tested and vetted 
And not only that, it's an economic thing because if I buy garbage, I'm ended up going to buy it two or three times. And in the end, if I just would have bought the right stuff the first time, uh, it would have lasted. So Eagle Industries, top notch. Some of their uh, newer stuff because of high production needs, you know, especially 2010 to right now, has kind of gone down a little bit. And they're not produced in the USA anymore. They're produced in like the Dominican Republic or something. So they're not U.S. made. And I think that Personally, I think that uh, that does affect the functionality because a sweatshop worker is not going to pay the same amount of attention to detail as an American worker that knows this is going to an American Armed Forces member that's going to use this in combat. So uh, just to look out from there, uh, you know, I like Eagle Industries. It's good. I have no problem trusting it. I've worn, I've owned Eagle Industries assault packs, um, plate carriers, um, you know, Bulks cut carriers, uh, you know everything. They're they're generally good to go. You won't go wrong. And what's also good is you can find it cheap on the surplus market. Um, you know eBay and surplus stores. They got a lot of good Eagle industry stuff because it's you know it's you know big wars, big surplus. So uh, you can find it relatively cheap if you look out there, and the quality is still top notch. This shit will last forever. You don't have to worry about this this breaking. So just be warned though, uh, there are, I guess, uh, airsoft copies of this stuff, especially out of Asia. You know, they like to copy this stuff because airsofters don't need, you know, a $350 Cirrus to go play airsoft. You know, they're not fighting in Iraq or Afghanistan. They need a $20 vest to look like they're in Iraq and Afghanistan, not a $350 vest that's meant to take the abuse. So just know what you're looking for and know how to spot fakes so you don't waste your money on fakes, especially if you're shopping on eBay because there, there's just so many fakes that people try and press by. But this is Eagle Industries, and these are just some samplings of some stuff. But uh, overall, I like them. They're good to go. So with that, this is my first video, and it is on Eagle Industries. Uh, I plan on doing one for, like, every major gear manufacturer that's out there, even the bad ones that I don't even own stuff for. I'm going to try and acquire some pieces uh, from Condor, Blackhawk, uh, some of the other guys that I think are subpar, so I can demonstrate why that piece of equipment is subpar. So this is the first one in the video in the series. Look out for more videos on this series. I hopefully at least once a week I'll be doing a video on a different manufacturer, what I like about them, and why I choose them or don't choose them, and why they're great and not so great. And any comments, you know, leave them below. Uh, with fi one final uh, alibi, if uh, you're interested in this vest right now, uh, it is up for sale. I'm clearing out my gear locker. I got too much crap. Uh, it's a size small, it's khaki, and it has uh, the Safari Land box cut panels both front and rear. <clears throat> and the vest is fully functional. I'll do a little back shot right here. It just has a slight stain right here. So if you're interested, I'm selling it pretty cheap. If you're interested, give me a personal message. And, uh, you know, I can be open to some trades depending on what you have. So, and I do have some uh, assorted kit that I can, get, I can give you with it. You know, some ammunition pouches and some other stuff. So uh, let me know. It wasn't the main purpose of the video to sell my shit, but... Uh, it is for sale and I don't need it, so I'd be more than happy to pass it on to somebody else at a great discounted price. So this is a level 3A soft armor package as it sits. So, uh, other than that, if you want me to do a review of a manufacturer, let me know. I own just about everything. I own Cry, LBT, uh, ATS, First Spear, T TYR, uh, you name it, I own it. If it's a Top Gear manufacturer, I can do uh, I can do reviews on just about any of the products. Mayflower, I got a lot of Mayflower stuff. So Velocity Systems, I got some of their stuff. So I had some BAE stuff, some Eclipse stuff, but I got rid of it. So uh, let me know what you guys uh, you know want to see a company review of and everything and I'm not getting any endorsements you know I don't work for any of these guys so I'm just giving it how I feel so with that later out and uh, you know leave comments and concerns uh, in, the, in the box below